We understand here at Nolathane how difficult it is sometimes to interpret and understand the raft of components that make up a car's, particularly the front suspension systems. And when a customer comes asking, they can come with a variety of names. Because one thing that has happened over the years in our industry is the names have evolved. So let's break down a couple of really important ones so we understand exactly what they are. Okay, so here's our car looking from above and there's the front going that direction. So first of all, I want to talk about the control arm. Now, this is it here. You can see the arrows pointing it to it in two different applications. Sometimes they vary in shape a little bit. They're perpendicular across the car, kind of east-west, and I'd almost call them the primary suspension component under there. And they're called a control arm because they do exactly that. They actually, from the chassis, control the whole wheel hub assembly out there. So it's quite a robust article and a critical one. Now, that's got a couple of names. Control arm has been called the wishbone over the years or the A-arm because often that was joint in one piece and it was kind of like a wishbone or an A-arm. Pretty obvious. Then of course we've got our radius arm or our strut rods. Now they're out the front. I've drawn two different variations here. They go out generally at about 45 degrees and they're a radius arm because they can control the radius that all of this moves in. They're adjustable. But in older applications, or not that old, but you'll see instances where that's called a strut rod, where it fixes to the control arm somewhere along its length, or in a more modern application, a radius arm, which attaches directly to the upright or the hub out here. So some of the common names for that over the years have been radius arm, strut rod, radius rod, caster bar, even a Z bar, so very difficult to be on top of all of that. But if you stick to these sorts of names, radius arm, control arm, I think you should keep yourself out of trouble. So I hope that helps you identify and understand some of these items when working with your customers across the counter.